The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, without having the rational creation or without having that racial species of Israelites, we, the church age believers, have been given the great privilege to be thumbed out as our Lacanicidists. This great believers, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, have been given greatest privilege and opportunity of all time to serve that great and unique Lord. During the incarnation of our Lord, when the people of Israelites were present, under the hypostatic union, our Lord did not believe or entrusted himself to those people Though they believed upon him because for the signs and the miracles and the things what he has done. And our Lord strongly reprimanded, telling to the point, I know what is there in this man. And at the same time, in the conclusion verse of John 2 25, our Lord tells to us, I do not need anyone to give me a testifying or witnessing. Because about you, the human beings, what you are and what is exactly in the human, our Lord knows in eternity past. That is what, dear brethren, you and I need to prick around and think around and to look around. Though what we are, being aliens and traitors and deceivers and cheaters and disobeying men, in this Alekinicetesus, new spiritual species in Christ, our Lord has given to each and every believer one gift of spiritual real. Do you know how wretched and ruined we are? Do you realize the grace of the Lord being given for us before judgment? Do you realize not only that grace to be saved by believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he has in fact and indeed given to each and every church age believer one spiritual gift, minimum one spiritual gift of the permanent real, not the temporary ones. The defunct spiritual gifts of temporary, like the apostles, the prophets, or the miracles or the healings of the tongues or the interpretation of the tongues or the discernment of the spirits. Being seized long back, he has given now for us the permanent spiritual gifts, and particularly to the male realm, who is a glory to the Lord. The way how Jeremiah was been born, he said to the one, to his father, that you have got a great thing. A male being born in the family of God is a great sight, is a great importance. But we in this church have been made no difference between a male and a female concerning the spiritual life. But the communication spiritual leadership gift definitely has a difference till now. Lord cannot use which is defiled for him to be communicated in the pulpit. He uses only a male believer. And the permanent spiritual gifts which include the gift of a pastor teacher, the gift of an evangelist. Or in fact even the gift of administration or helps which may include both male and female. The gift of love as well helps, sacrifices, administration, hospitality. But the two important communicational spiritual leadership gift demands for each and every believer, particularly the gift of a pastor teacher, is to communicate the truth. Preparation, faithful preparation, as our Lord lives in the truth, as our Lord breaths in the truth, as our Lord eyes are upon the truth. We, the church age believers, have been given this truth to communicate for the gift of a pastor teacher. Besides this truth, 
for each and every believer, they have been given the privacy of the priesthood and the work of an ambassadorship to him. The need and the purpose of this ambassadorship work, that each and every believer should reach to the maturity of spiritual self-esteem, dear brethren. This spiritual self-esteem followed by spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity is the ultima for this unique spiritual life which, and, which each and every believer has been designed uniquely in eternity past. That's why each and every believer has been indwelled. Whosoever believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been permanently indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit, but the filling ministry is temporary. The permanent eternal relationship is always true. The foundation being laid upon Christ, there is nothing that can lose out your salvation. In fact, even Lord God himself cannot separate you from his salvation. But you will lose the temporary fellowship while you are still alive in this pilgrimage tour. How? By your sin. By the thought, word, or deed. And how you get back by rebound by John 1, 9, which is not a license to sin, but a license to serve by God. And how, under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have been called to serve him. And that pure mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And the bona fide gift of the head of the church given to us to communicate that truth makes us to be qualified. Though our Lord tells in John 2.25, I need not want anyone to testify or to witness because I know what is there in that man. I know what is there in this mankind. But though Lord sanctified us and kept us purely as a spiritual spaces in Christ and he has given us to speak out and testify about our Lord in the manner of our life what we live, in the manner of our trading what we do and absolutely in the spiritual gift of the pastor teacher what we communicate. And that to have purely by the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit because he constantly indwells in you and we have been warned not to grieve him, not to squelch him, not to lie against him, but rather to be controlled of the Spirit called always and constantly and we need to communicate that truth, dear brother, and that truth. That's how Lord has given now for this church age believers this privilege, this privilege to be indwelled by the Trinity, this privilege to be indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit so that we can match we can match to the truth of his integrity. The strong reprimandation what he has given in John 2.25. I know I need not want anyone to witness against me. Because what is there in that man I know very well, saith our Lord, that same Lord in his unique dispensation of the church age, after the resurrection and ascension and session with the Lord God the Father, has given this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to communicate when that pastor teacher being a male is been faithfully prepared to communicate. But what is happening today? Are we at least aware why Lord rejected in John 2.25 those people not to witness him? And why he has elected you in this Alakaini Ketesis to witness him? And to be our ambassadors for the Lord, though you do not have been given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher with respect of the female realm, because the pastor teacher gift has been given only to a male realm, never to a female. Then to why has made you to become a witnessing for Christ? Then to why has been made given for you to become ambassador for the Lord? Have you ever thought of it? Why has been given for you to be influenced constantly by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Have you ever thought of it? Do you think the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the indwelling trinity is a joke? Or it is just a share out of a lie? Bible doctrine clearly delineates for us why it is the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to us. So that we can be an effective witness to the Lord. And the long and the greater time you invest in this cosmos diabolicus by grieving and squelching Lord God, the Holy Spirit and lying to him, you are not even budging an inch to know the truth. And what you're lying to him, when you're squelching or quenching, that's what the KJV tells you are not able to discern right doctrine and false doctrine because you are lost and you have become a succumb to matiosis, which is a false doctrine, the vacuum. The vacuum of your soul will be filled with emotion and you are not able to discern what is the true value and the purpose of the pulpit and what it is to communicate in the ice concept, which is isagogical, categorical, and axiological explanation of the word over the dispensing technique of dispensations because the much variegated wisdom of God could be taught through the concept of dispensing technique of dispensations alone. What is happening, dear brethren? Constantly quenching, squelching. How? Through the personal sin, by thought, word, or deed. 
the personal sin which Bible tells to us and reprimands to us and corrects us when we are walking in the spirit. And what is your area of personal sin? You know very well. And then next, later on, after not only grieving, we absolutely not only squelch, but we grieve him. And grieve is the overall failure for us not to give number one priority for Bible doctrine in the pulpits. Overall failure of the power. The power source could be absolutely cut off so that you will not be available to look upon that unique spiritual life, dear brethren. You have lost that power source. You have lost that truth. You have lost that true eligibility where the Lord has called for you in eternity past to look upon that truth. That overall failure is number one criteria in the pulpits today. That power source has been absolutely thrown out. That power source has not been gotten back by using a rebound 1 John 1 9, but rather that power source has been told, what is the need for me, that power source? Without that first power option, which is rebound, and the second power option, which is the controlling power, minister of life, God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot be a witnessing to the Lord, and you will be like those people whom the Lord has rejected and during the period of his incarnation, that these are the men who are not worth for me to witness. But now in his Alekane Ketesis, it is our great privilege to handle his word, to rightly divide his truth, and to be a greater witnesses for him, because he lives in the truth, and his eyes are upon the truth, and we have been mandated by that same Lord to worship in spirit and in biblical truth. And dear brethren, if you are not interested to know this truth, Lord help you. Because the great privilege, what it has been bestowed upon us, will never be given back will never be given again in the future to anyone. It is only eunuch. And that eunuch is this realm. There is only eunuch, one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, not Mahmadinyam, who could come as a pygamber from blood. We have only one eunuch. That's what you find. Uniquely born son, Monegine, the only one eligible. Likewise, the church is eunuch, eunuch, eunuch. We do find many traps by Satan because it has been intensified in this angelic conflict. And Satan knew very well what it is to go against the word of the Lord and how to allure the people. Because if the people come to know the truth, they will not even care Satan. Because positionally they have been made superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And Satan knows very well that it has already lost the battle. And it doesn't have the power source in the head. With its wagging tail like a dog, it is having only the power in the tail. And now it is running that show. And you, the believer, have been given the greatest source of all time. Greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. The believer have been given the indwelling trinity. The believer have been given everything, even to witness to the Lord under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if it is not purely by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brother, then take it granted, you cannot even budge an inch. We shall further continue about this discourse as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leads us. But, dear brother, and the only truth, what I want to communicate for you all and tell to you all is very simple, whether you believe it or not. Lord rejected during his incarnation and hypostatic union, those believers whom they wanted to entrust themselves to be a witnessing. But Lord has elected you and me in this unique dispensation of the church age, every believer being an ambassador for Christ in the privacy of his priesthood, only under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be a great witnesses for him. And the gift of a pastor teacher should be more careful than this, because we have not been called just to wag around or wail around or to be not able to discern between the holy and the profane things, but rather we have been here called to give, which is constantly holy, holy, holy. And we have been given that new nature, purely based upon the righteousness and the truth, purely based upon that holiness, which could be derived from the absolute standards of Bible doctrine. And if you are not interested to know this truth, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. So which way you want to go, dear brethren? You decide. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it us a blessing and challenge sovereign, Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.